pour a glass of craft beer, we can do this. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brew, and welcome to another edition of BML here on BAOS. This evening, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to crack open some beers, and we're going to talk about some Game of Thrones theories for Season 8, the final season. This is not something we really talk about here. Um, not even really something like I would talk about in general. I don't watch a lot of TV, but be watching Game of Thrones for, I guess, whatever, close to the beginning, and uh, it's probably the most impeccably written story of all time, arguably, or at least on television. Um, so, because it's like, Tiff and I have been getting he hella deep into a lot of the, um, the fan theories and stuff, or what people think could happen, um, there's only four at the, this is actually, like, filmed on, uh, pretty much in real time, episode three comes this Sunday, and, um, you know what, we've been finding, watching a whole bunch of YouTube videos and just finding these crazy theories, so, uh, we're gonna get into some of that tonight. So the beers we're gonna drink are from Wellington. This is their mix pack number six, and this is the first time it's been in cans. You might have seen some of our older videos where we had the bottled ones, probably for the last three or four. Uh, now we're in cans. What we have, we have four beers. We have the Hellas Lager, which I believe is now year round. Um, we have their Kick and Back Session IPA. Uh, we have a new. This is a new one for me here. It's called Raked Over, and it's a uh, an IPA with pineapple, mango, and habanero. And the rhubarb saison, which I'm pretty sure I've had before. So the Hellas Lager, definitely a solid, solid beer. Grab this anytime I can. Um, it is what's the percent here? 4.5. Um, I've seen it in the small cans, I think, but this is a full on tall can. Got the Welly branded glass. And this is just a, a sick one. I know they had the Day Lager Dave, that was a great beer too. But they ended up going with this one. Uh, pretty damn good year-round lager. I haven't had it for a bit, so... Always love starting on a crispy. Look at that, mate. You could read the Game of Thrones through that glass, am I right? Get in ya. Nice. The crackery, biscuity, mild bitterness. Um, it's like slightly opaque, I guess. I think it's still haze. Super crushable. Um, not like overwhelming amount of flavor, but just nicely balanced. I love it. All right. So the first theory is from a friend of ours named Bass, a great bloke, and this is what he said. So we're going to have four different theories just to go with each beer. Um, so he says that the King Slayer turns into a Queen Slayer. So Jamie will kill Cersei um, to sort of go along with his name. He says Arya kills the Mountain, that big dude with the fucked up face, um, which would complete her list of kills. Um, he said Bran goes back in time to build the wall. He gets stuck and then turns into the Night King, which is one of the bigger theories. Um, There's actually Tiff's theory that uh, Bassam borrowed, so I'm going to put that out there. Just Thank make you. sure. Okay? Thank you. We cool? Not the Night King part. Just N building the wall. Building the, going back in time to build the wall. Bran the Builder. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, John kills the Night King. Jon Snow kills the Night King, but he also kills Daenerys. Um, Daenerys, he says his Sansa dies via Daenerys, so I don't know if that means like, like, like she actually kills her like intentionally or something like that. Uh, Tyrion lives and Brienne dies. Um, I feel like if anyone saw episode two, the fact that they focused on way too many warm moments between people like Brienne, um, that Tormund dude, the wildling guy, um, who else was, there's a whole bunch of people who pretty much everyone who was there were having way too many moments and, uh, what's the dude's name? The worm guy, what, Grey Worm and, uh, and the other chick. And yeah. they're like, cool, well, well, let's go away from this, get the fuck out of this cold ass place yes, and go somewhere yes, warm. Yes, 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 yes. And then like, they're done for, they're fucking done. Um, they ain't going nowhere. So that was Bathroom's theory. We had a whole bunch more chats. He was telling me his older theory because um, he read all the books before the TV show even came out. He's like a full-on fantasy nerd. So he had tons of theories about this. Um, but that was the key parts for season eight. So I thought that was pretty good. So now we're going to move into the kicking back. It's the 4.8% session IPA with Ontario hops. Um, mate, doesn't say anything else. I think I had this like... A couple years ago, not through any of their packs, but all right, smells juicy. Um, I think this is now kind of a year rounder. 
So this this pack is definitely it seems to be 50-50 with their uh, year round stuff and some um, some new gems. So this looks a little opaque here. Wicked color. Oops. Smells tropical. Get in you. All right, nice. Kind of that dank uh, style of uh, juicy IPA. Definitely juicy for sure. Low, super low bitterness. Clean, little um, kind of like chalky, dusty, a little. Wicked head, it's like sticking around, nice and foamy. A ton of flavor for four point eight. It's really good. I like it. Yeah, man. I'm not sure if they change the recipe or not over time, but that's a great beer. Um, theory two is Tiffany's theory. So this is uh, Tiff dictated this to me before. So if anyone has, I don't know if you, I didn't know any of this stuff to be honest until we watched these videos. Like I didn't even know, I remember most people's names, but like, cause I didn't read the book. Like I read Lord of the Rings before the movies came out. So I knew everything. I knew every place and every character and they missed so much, uh, so much of the book was not in the movie cause it probably wouldn't have been possible. Um, even in the extended edition, which I purchased, which is like three, three hour movies. It's insane. But, uh, so Tiss first theory is the, that Jon Snow is Azor Ahai, who is the prince who was promised and the prophecy goes that he had to plunge his sword through the heart of Melisandre, who was that red witch. That's my theory. That's your theory. But, but the didn't it say something about the that? The actual theory is that he's supposed to plunge it through the heart of, of. His, uh, love. Because the book says that also the he book is plunges different it the... through the heart of the love of his life. Which, so it should be Danny, Which is why I always thought Danny was the one that... Was he was going to get murked. But I'm using her now because she is filled with fire and she has said that I'm going to come back and... Right, she has to like Help play her part to... And she said, I meant to die in this land. All right. So. Okay, thank you. Um, I was trying to get Tiff to come in here with me. It would have been a whole production. So we were like, you know what? <laughs> Let's be, yeah, you know, yeah. women have to do their thing. You know? thing. Um, so in order to kill the Night King, he's going to uh, bust the sword through her. Um, Tiff's theory, of course, with that Bran is Bran the Builder who went back in time, built the wall, and that's why the Night King is trying to get rid of him now because he needs to stop him building the wall. Because I don't really know if, what did you say why? Like, because I've got here fucking up, he was fucking up his game. Basically, I think he's so, just fucking up the game. Right, so he just made things super difficult. They were stuck behind this big ass wall until they got the ice dragon. Yeah, I until think he marked Bran. Until he marked Bran. And when he marked Bran, that allowed him to move past the wall. What do you mean, marked? He when that time that Brad went back and he saw the Night King and then mm -hmm. he put his hand on him. Oh, and, and now we could see everything yeah, forever. Cause that okay. to push so now he can keep coming through and yeah. like doing whatever he can to yeah. this dude. Um, we have here that Daenerys will take Cersei's throne because she's the younger one that replaces Cersei based on the prophecy from the books. Is that correct from the books? Uh, the prophecies uh, from I think the first season, first or second season. They said that. Okay. Yeah. She said Small that. details, man. You don't yeah. even think about yeah. this shit at the time. Yeah. Okay, uh, Arya wears a Jamie mask uh, that she learned in that place and kills Cersei. Um, and the reason why she's going to do that one, it compl I guess, I kind of completes her list aside from it completes the prophecy. The prophecy, and it completes Arya's list. And Arya's list, even though Bassam meant in the mountain, but I guess she let him rock for whatever reason. Right, yeah. um, but Cersei's only meant to have three kids, so she's had the three who have all passed, mm -hmm. and so she's going to die then because she can't have the baby that she's had. So at the end of the day, she has to die somehow. And your and theory is that yeah. Arya will do it that way, which I, yes. I like that one. Because it was, you're supposed to marry a king who's like an asshole or whatever, has a bunch of kids, cheats on you. Two, you're going to uh, have three children. They'll have golden hair. Done. Done. They'll all die. Done. You've really studied this. A queen this. is going to, someone else younger and prettier than you is going to come and like take the throne from you. Okay. Khaleesi. Yeah. Maybe Sansa. Um, uh, yeah. See, I don't know if Sansa's going to be like, Sansa. busting like, like, she's not like, out here like that. Um, and then once you've thought you've lost everything and your kids are dead yep. and your throne's been taken away, your youngest brother will come and strangle the life out of you. Okay. So and that, and that could Jamie come. Actually doing I think that, you do so that for that's sure. Why that's why I Sansa in the mask. Uh, Arya. Arya. Okay, I like that. Uh, if anyone didn't see, by the way, the Sansa, like the actual actress, I forgot her name, Sophie something, on Twitter, go find her on Twitter. She wrote, she did this sick video, like talking about the Arya sex scene. It was amazing. In honor of Easter, I guess Game of Thrones wanted the storyline to have a little Easter bunny hop, hop, hopping into that pussy. And that's the tea.
Um, now I'm really fucked with it. There's this whole other thing on Twitter now called the Sansa Hive, like based on Beyonce's Beehive thing. It's amazing. Everyone's just like loving her and quoting her. There's all these videos with like all her like one-liners. It's amazing. Uh, and the last part here is that the Starks are the heroes and the majority of them will live. Jon lives, Sansa lives, Arya lives, and Tyrion lives. So that is Tiffany's theory, which leads us to be number three. This one's called Raked Over IPA with Mango Pineapple and Habanero. Uh, I did see someone like the other day posting about how hot this one is. I guess we'll find out. 6.9%. Um, I'm not sure if it's New England or not, but... Maybe it is. Wellington have been doing a bunch of kind of New England style beers recently, or at least on the hazier side of things, uh, which I'm quite enjoying. Uh, this is looking pretty, pretty hazy right now, fam. Nice head. It's a bit in there. We'll come back to you. All right. Um, kind of smells tropical, but get in you. Nice. Oh, yeah. Fuck that habanero. I don't really like spicy beers. This would have been phenomenal without the habanero. Not necessary at all. I love spice in my food, just not in my beverages. Um, super juicy. Kind of just takes away from a lot of the other characters of the beer. Yeah, super dry and chalky. Man, this is great. A really good beer. Just didn't need the spice. Yeah, super fruity. The chalkiness I love. This is getting like it's super hazy. It's fantastic. Yeah, I'd like to try this without the... Um, have an error for sure all right third theory so there's a thing where everyone's talking about when the uh, white walkers come everyone women children a few other people are going to be hanging out in the crypt which is where the stark family are like kind of buried or whatever behind these concrete things and they're holding iron which keeps them uh trapped stops them waking up or keeps the spirits trapped or something like that so when john told daenerys that he was her nephew that was the, where he was he was talking to his mum, which is very funny because the actress who played john's mum was this chick from i want to say um uh the fall a tv uh, a netflix show with Gillian anderson and it's the same actress it was hilarious to us um so basically one part of the theory is if people if like during the battle if man's got downstairs there people take the iron like the the um the swords from the crypt because that's where they're at from the, the people, to use them to fight, then that potentially could wake those ancestors. Uh, they would come to life and fight the White Walkers. Or alternatively, I just saw a theory now where it said the White Walkers turn the dead Starks into White Walkers to fuck everybody up. So there's kind of two sides to that one, which I, I thought was pretty interesting. So that was this habanero beer. Fuck, it's really nice, but Jesus Christ, it's burning. It's acidic as hell. All right, last one, rhubarb saison. Uh, as you all know, if you've watched any videos before, I'm not a saison guy by any stretch of the imagination, um, but I do mess with rhubarb. I, I swear I've had this before, because I think it was in a bottle in one of the other packs. Uh, rhubarb is a very uh, weird ingredient, but it works so well. Now this is just, oh no, I had a rhubarb saison from uh, Kroonin. And I thought it was weird because I'd never seen rhubarb without strawberry. So this one sits at 5.1. Nothing else in there. No, nice can design, super cool. Um, super clear. Kind of come up with those uh, herby spice notes on the nose. Get in you. Nice. Crisp, chill, not overly, like I don't like saisons because I don't like the, um, all that herb and all that stuff. It's just not for me. This is pretty solid. I'm not getting much of the um, the rhubarb, but maybe it's giving it some mouthfeel because I know rhubarb is like a bitter vegetable, essentially. That's like, you know, you have rhubarb in salad. It works really well. Not too bad at all. All right. Now, I've got this website here that just had a whole bunch of them and there was too many. I'm just going to read through some interesting ones. So one here is that Daenerys will turn into the ultimate villain, the Mad Queen. I guess that means that the uh, the Night King would like get her. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, wrong one. That the that her father was the Mad King, so then she would be the Mad Queen. Um, it doesn't really say exactly how she would turn into that, but that is a good one. Uh, then the alternative I was getting confused with was she will become the Night Queen to the King there. I guess that he would get her and then keep her on her side and she'd be with the dragon and all that, um, which is interesting. All right, so this one is that John will sacrifice himself for the princess who that was promised, which is kind of like a flip on... Um, 
Tiff's theory, which was that he will kill Daenerys, because they're saying here that there was no gender, whether it was prince or princess, in the prophecy. So it could be the other way around, is that like he lets Daenerys kill him to be the princess who was promised, type of thing. Uh, another one here, uh, John and Daenerys will betray each other, which is seeming the way that season, episode two ended, quite plausible that they were kind of vexed and that they might not um, really be fucking with each other too heavy right there, uh, literally and non-literally. There's a couple of other theories here that say either Sam or Jamie uh, is the prince that was promised, which is a bit of a stretch. Uh, Jamie will kill the Night King, maybe. Kingslayer could do it, that's definitely possible. And a lot of man's got those Valerian steel swords, so they could come through with that. This one's a little crazy. It says Ned Stark is alive and well and will return. Don't know how. Um, bit of a stretch. Interesting one, though. Now, this one here says Tyrion is actually a Targaryen, too, um, which is very interesting. So, and they're quoting here that Tywin's father said, You're no son of mine, in which they interpret it as being a diss to him being a little person, as opposed to, You're actually not my son. So, that's a good one. This is a good one. Cersei's pregnancy will actually kill her. So to fulfill the prophecy with her not having a third, sorry, not having a fourth child, that the actual pregnancy itself will kill her versus somebody else, Jamie or Arya, which is the likely of the more likely uh, of the two. If they get away with this, uh, survive this war thing going on. And the last one here is that Sam is the one telling the story, essentially the narrator. So he would be George R. R. Martin or whatever. So. There's a whole bunch. I'd like to hear if uh, anyone has any other theories. Um, there's a lot going on in this show. Um, you know, it's complicated, it's intriguing, it's fascinating. Uh, so yeah, man, love to hear what you guys have to say about that. Also, I forgot to mention, we got the BOS merch. I finally got my own. Uh, we're using a platform called Teespring. The link is in the description in every video. Uh, so check that out. Um, we basically, they're print to order. So instead of us keeping stock, we have them online. Um, I made a whole bunch of different designs uh, from Phil from Brewhead. So shout out to Phil for that one. So I just got this. I got the hoodie right now. It's got a little, um, the logo at the back. Bam, bam. I got myself a t-shirt and a tank. So I'm set for summer. Um, but you can, I've got other designs. We've got this one in blue. Um, we've got all different colors for all the different uh, things. We've got three different designs for Get It In Ya. So everything has a front and back. It's pretty fly. So I just got mine today. Uh, so grab that if it pleases you. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, boom, smash the thumbs up. Hit subscribe below. Hit the notification bell. Yay. So you know when the new new drops. Follow us on social media at BOS Podcast. Check out the long form audio. Uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Got, right now we're in the middle of our Ottawa uh, series. We have another three episodes to drop. Uh, some great stuff came out of that. So that is it, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. And as always, get it in ya. Yeah.